the lights on, the camera's recording, the cat couldn't care less, but how about you? Are you ready for some good news? First up, a new study provides a look at the worldwide state of human health. The Global Burden of Disease, Injuries, and Risk Factors, or GBD, study was just published in The Lancet. It includes research from 1,870 independent experts in 127 countries and territories to provide the most complete perspective possible on the health of the entire human population for the good and for the bad. And fortunately, for our purposes here, and, you know, for the human species in general, there's quite a bit of good. For one thing, global life expectancy is up. It's now 69 years for men and 74.8 years for women. That's a more than 10-year gain since 1980. For another thing, HIV-AIDS-related deaths were down 33% since 2005. Malaria-related deaths down 37% since 2005. Additionally, 122 countries have reached their Sustainable Development Goal target in reducing the number of women who die from causes related to pregnancy. And the worldwide number of deaths of children under age 5 in 2015 was half what it was in 1990. That's not to say there isn't still a lot of work to do. Smoking-related deaths were up worldwide, despite exposure to smoking decreasing. Chronic illnesses still affect billions of people, and life expectancy and child mortality in the United States were both worse than expected for a nation so economically and socially developed. But the lesson from the good news in this report is clear. Intervention works, and the world's health problems are not unsolvable, provided we continue to do the work necessary to solve them. Please, Adi, don't feel any pressure to perform for the audience. Just relax and do what you do. Okay? Good. Next up, researchers in Germany have found a way to enable the body to regenerate damaged nerves. A team of scientists at the German Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases, or the DZNE, in Bonn, have identified a molecular breaking mechanism that regulates neuron growth. This is usually a good thing, but this neural growth regulation also prevents damaged nerve connections from regenerating, making nerve damage, such as that suffered in a spinal cord injury, so difficult to repair. The DZNE team discovered a gene, CACNA2D2, that plays a key role in this molecular breaking mechanism. The team found that deactivating this gene increased neural regeneration in mice with spinal cord injuries. They also found that the protein encoded by this gene could be blocked by the drug pregabalin, which is already in use as a treatment for nerve pain. The team believes pregabalin, if administered soon enough following an injury, could not only reduce nerve pain, but also encourage regeneration of damaged nerves. The paper on these findings is published in the journal Neuron. And finally, engineers at Berkeley Lab have created the smallest transistor ever. Hey, hey, did you hear that? That's pretty cool. Using carbon nanotubes and molybdenum disulfide, engineers at Berkeley Lab's Materials Science Division were able to build a transistor with a gate that measures a mere one nanometer wide. That's 20 times smaller than transistors currently on the market and 50,000 times smaller than the width of an average human hair. It's also five times smaller than was even thought possible prior to this breakthrough. The Berkeley Labs team was able to break the five nanometer barrier by switching from silicon, the standard material for transistors, to molybdenum disulfide, which is commonly sold as an engine lubricant. It's similar to silicon, but it has properties that make it easier to control the flow of electrons through it at smaller scales. This one nanometer transistor is still just a proof of concept. The team still has to devise ways of fabricating it in large enough numbers to be practical. But even at such an early stage, this is an impressive achievement. The paper on the one nanometer gate transistor is published in the journal Science. A new study shows that the people of the world are getting healthier in many ways. Researchers activate a natural repair mechanism for damaged nerves, and engineers build the smallest transistor ever. That's the good news. 
Hey folks, on behalf of this adorable sleeping kitty, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also, please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.